right now, one in three drivers is cruising around in a state of skepticism about just how much value their car insurance company is delivering. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton can help you get to a better state because she'll talk with you, listen to you, and help put together a policy that has you written all over it from cost to coverage, all backed by 24-7 customer support. Feeling less skeptical? Then call State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton and officially get to a better state with State Farm. Well, we're back for the start of the second quarter. As uh, Joey and I were talking in the break, the end zones look awfully good tonight in that black and gold checkerboard. Uh, appreciate the sponsors of uh, the Golden Tide getting that done last night here at uh, Walter Kilzer Stadium. Third and five for Humboldt. Quarterback is going to keep it. And we had two people miss him. Ryan White and number one, Logan Morris, both kind of missed him, and he was able to shake away. And uh, luckily he went down, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Well, that's the defensive stand that we've needed, and now we're going to see a punt. Young man had a great punt last time, but we will see Malik Dotes get a hold of it, see him march down the sideline. Last punt, Joey, as you just mentioned, Blankenship had a high spiraling. Ball turned over. It looked like a college punt. Blanking Chips handled the kicking duties for Humboldt all year long. This time is more of a rugby style punt. Dokes is going to get a chance at returning it, and he's going to have the ball down right there. Well, another at about good the 42 punt. yard line. Yeah, good punt, good coverage. He's putting another seven on the board this time. Peabody goes back on offense at uh, the 42 yard line, first and 10. And you know, when you have the weapons that Peabody has, it doesn't take long to score. It'd be, it would look good to see Tavari get a crease again or maybe a pass. We haven't seen the passing game take shape yet. Well, if they're going to play off of these guys as much as they've been playing off so far, uh, let's throw the ball out here a little bit. First and 10 for Peabody. Barnett on the carry. He's going to have a pickup of about five, maybe six on the play. He moves the pile forward. Impressive. Tackle by number 56, Small. Austin Gullett, and number 71 for Humboldt, uh, Marshawn Cox. Small in stature, but big in heart, Tavari Barnett. It's offensive line doing a good job so far. Second and four for the Golden Tide. The winner of this contest goes to Memphis next week to play Memphis Westwood, who had a bye this week. Number three, Braxton Bogus on the carry. He's going to have enough for another State Farm first down. Appreciate Amy Greer and all her staff on South College. They do a great job sponsoring Peabody Athletics. No matter what season we're playing, you'll look around and you'll see some, some sponsorship by State Farm, and we appreciate them helping uh, sponsor this uh, playoff broadcast tonight. You know, guys, they are, the referees are really intentionally moving this game along. First and 10 for Peabody. Kind of a high snap that was handled by Bogus. He hands the ball off to the Barnett. Barnett's going to have a gain of about four on the play. And you would think at some point, I, perhaps we are setting up the Humboldt defense for a bigger play, a, a pass play, something. Really conservative play calling right now. But effective. We're moving the ball, taking time off the clock. Gain of three instead of four brings up second down and seven. Tight end to the left, spread formation. Barnett's with Bogus in the backfield. There's Barnett with the handoff. He's going to have another four. Gain of about four on the play should bring up second down and uh, two. So maybe it was a, a gain of five. No, it was a gain, yeah, a gain of five. Well, and again, maybe I'm just thinking but uh, out loud, but I think we're setting them up. We're low on your sleep inside. I think we're going to see a pass play here soon. Maybe not on this play, <laughs> third and short. Eventually, we're going to see a pass play. Uh, eventually. That, that's pretty confident in that. Ooh. And Humboldt was ready for that one. 
That's what you get. You run your quarterback as much as Peabody does, and you're going to get him hit in the mouth sooner or later, and he's not going to get up. Loss of about two on the play brings up fourth down and about four. Uh, we'll see what Peabody's going to do right here. Offense stays on the field like they're going to go for it. And Coach Mintz is getting the play. Ball uh, signals being brought in. Now all the players look at their wrist coaches. Ten seconds to go on the play clock. These fans want to see a first down. And there's Barnett. He's going to have a first down. That was a big gamble on the part of the Peabody coaching staff, but it paid off. You don't make it, you give Humboldt really good field position, a chance to go ahead in this game. But Tavari and Barnett's number is called once again, and he comes through once again. Now we're fixing to throw the ball right here. First and 10 for the Golden Tide. As Barnett runs around the right end on the fourth down. Peabody set up back in that same offense. Bog Bogus is back to pass. And the pass is over there to Ryan White, and Ryan was wide open, and so wide open, Bogus, I think, <laughs> kind of freaked out and just kind of threw it over his head. And, and the, the, what the fans were yelling at was Malik Dokes was all alone in the end zone. No one within 20 yards of him. So several uh, offensive receivers open on that play. Well, it shows you that Humboldt's not ready for the pass. Dokes was wide open in the right corner. White was open over the middle, and we just couldn't get the ball to him. Brings up second down and 10. Well, now you stretch him out a little bit. That running game's gonna be a little more effective. Ball handed off to Barnett. He's still on his feet. But you, you, you think we're gonna have to throw in the pass somewhere, you know, the short pass. It's not been real effective so far in the game. Had some drops, or at least one, but doesn't mean we have to go back. We can't go back to that. Pick up by, of six on the play. Tackled by John Burns, number two, uh, for the Vikings. Third and four for Peabody. Barnett's still on the loose, and he's going to be tackled right there after a gain of maybe one or two on the play. Tackled by number 71, Marshawn Cox. Number 56 is also in on the tackle for uh, uh, for the Vikings, Austin Gullett. And that's going to bring up another fourth down. Well, you, you've you got Humboldt defense just loading the box and kind of playing for the run, and that's what's coming. Again, that's going to bite them here before this game is over with. Fourth and four for Peabody. And Humboldt may have just jumped off sides and gave us a first down. I think number 23 Williams here on the near side jumped off. And so thank you for that gift. As Peabody has been guilty of that themselves this year. And Humboldt was guilty of that quite a few times the last time we played them. And uh, Peabody just hands, or has handed a gift again from Humboldt jumping off sides. First and ten for Peabody. Somebody's going to be open here. Barnett on the carry. He's on the. He dropped the football and it's picked up. Picked up by number 75 and he's running the other direction. He's finally tackled from behind. That's Garrett Oden as Barnett squeezed through the line and somebody stripped him of the football. And big Garrett Oden picked the ball up but going the other way. Well, Tavarian has been really good about possession. He's not fumbled the ball very often this year at all. He's carried it multiple times without a fumble. And I can just guarantee almost that he's gonna make up for that fumble. First and 10 for the Vikings as they snap the ball from their own 18 yard line. Split backfield, tight end to the right, two wide outs for Humboldt. Ball is gonna be passed out here to number four, Octavius Ferguson, but the referee's running down saying, no, he's out of bounds, he's out of bounds. 
but pretty good throw and catch right there from Humboldt. It, it was beautiful, but uh, no argument there on the Humboldt sideline. Must have been obvious. But that stretches us out. Shows what they can, what they're capable of. They've already scored once on that play. Dre Ballou into the contest for the Golden Tide is. Uh, Nigel Miller was beat out there long that time by Ferguson. Dre Ballou comes in to take his place. Second time Nigel has been, been beaten. Not terrible coverage, but uh, just a good pass. Good touch on that pass. Tackle on the play by number 27, Ray Buchanan, cleaned up there at the end by number 67, Hayden Whitby. Third and long here. Third and long for the Vikings. That fumble's not going to hurt quite as bad if we can hold them here, force them into a punt. Third and seven. Dead eye formation tied in to the right and left. Montague rolls out. Ball's thrown out here to number four, Ferguson, and he does a little twist right at the end, just enough to get the first down. We're to be first and ten for people uh, for for Humboldt. Well, we saw some passing in the last game between Trenton and Humboldt, but you, we definitely have seen them mix in the pass, the short pass, more this game, and I think it's a great game plan. Uh, you get the talented guys the ball in space. You get them a running start when you throw them the short pass. Humboldt is uh, minus their best runner tonight, Nick McLilly, number five, who gained 2,000 uh, 2, yards in the regular season. Solid eye formation. Fullback's going to be given the football. Number 25 carries the football right up the middle uh, for the Vikings. And that's number 25, Eric Skates. It's really a comprehensive game plan, uh, not focusing on any part of the offense, uh, really diverse. Pretty effective. Solid eye, two tight ends for Humboldt. Certainly a running formation for the Vikings. And there's Peabody, Johnny on the spot, ready to make the play. Bubba Bailey in there on the tackle, as well as number 27, Ray Buchanan. Tyler Gadlin was in there, number two. Well, we've talked about it, and that is the fact that Humboldt is not quicker than we are. You know, year after year, they have been one of the faster teams, quicker teams in our area. But Trenton is really uh, able to match speed for speed. Third. Third down and six for the Vikings. And coming in from the sideline. I believe Humboldt's going to be calling timeout. Coach Bland wants to talk about it. With three minutes and 35 seconds to go here in the second period, Humboldt has it third and six. We'll take timeout with them. You're watching a mighty good football game here from Walter Kilser Stadium on the campus of Peabody High School. We'll be back after this short break. Hello, this is Ed Norman, broker with LA Realty of Trenton. I want to thank all of you for making LA number one in our community. We aim to take good care of our customers to the best of our ability. We know that's how a successful real estate firm operates in a small town. Please remember us when you need help or just advice about your real estate. Thanks again. Third and seven for the Vikings. High formation. Two split outs to the right side. Montague rolls out. Out in the flat, he makes the pass. And had a missed tackle there from the Golden Tide. And it's gonna be enough for another first down for these Vikings from Humboldt. Well, not only do we see a missed tackle there, but we see terrible coverage there. There was nobody 
within 10 or 15 yards of him when he caught that ball. There's got to be some uh, some provision in that f- formation for one of our guys to come up on the on the. On the I'm not sure if he was a back out of the field or uh, set up as a wide receiver, but. First and 10 for Humboldt, eye formation, tight end to the right. Pitch back here to number 42. And he's gonna break one tackle and finally be pushed out of bounds. That's Cornelius Watson after a gain of about two on the play. Well, that's the big, bigger, more powerful back. They did a great job, if I remember correctly, when we played him last time, later in the game, was really became effective as a runner. No gain on the play. It looked from our advantage like he may have gained a yard or two, but I guess he was out of bounds. Second and 10 for the Vikings. Wing back to the left, tight end to the right. And that's Lilla Ferguson getting the ball kind of on a uh, end around uh, from that uh, slot back formation and Peabody was ready for it. Well, Loss that's, of about three on the play. You know, uh, dependent on speed and they're just not quicker than we are. That's not gonna be effective. Two minutes and 35 seconds to go here before halftime. And I don't believe they have any more timeouts, correct? They have no more timeouts. So that may be big here before this half is over. Do they get four timeouts now? Maybe the playoff system, you get an extra timeout. In the playoffs, Not real sure I guess about you that. get four timeouts. Anyway, we'll take timeout with them. Two minutes and 19 seconds. Humboldt just called a, another timeout. They're fourth of the first half. We'll be back right after this short break. I don't seem right. At Raspberry Tire, we can help you with brakes, transmission flushes, interstate battery replacement, all types of suspension repairs and alignments. We carry several major oil brands and tire brands, including Firestone and Bridgestone. Our service center can balance both passenger car tires and semi-truck tires and fill your tires with nitrogen. With 30 years of towing experience, we can haul small, compact cars to semi-trucks and we are the only record service in Gibson County with heavy-duty towing and recovery services. Come visit us at 2216 Highway 45 Bypass, Trenton. You would think it would be a pass here, guys, but third and very long. Third and about 14 for the Vikings. Peabody's fans sensing a little urgency here. Tight end to the left, two wide outs to the left for Humboldt. Montague rolls out to the right. He's, He's going to throw the ball open. down here deep, right over the head of Daniel Hodges. And he caught that ball right through the hands of Daniel Hodges. I thought Hodges made an interception, but number 15 just took it away from him right here at the end of the play. And uh, good throw and catch for the Vikings as Hodges appeared to be in pretty good position. That's Tony Agnew who came up with the football. And so Humboldt converts. Hodges playing center field there just kind of drifts over. was a little bit late. Uh, it would have been a great interception, but again, coverage is just a little bit lax there on Peabody. Humboldt has made some huge plays in the passing game. High formation, tight end to the right. Toss sweep out here to Watson, number 42. And he's gonna be tripped up by number 16, Ty Fields, and number one, Logan Morris. Ty Fields continues to have a great season. Just a great career for him here at Peabody. He's gonna be sorely missed. Minute and 20 seconds to go here in this first period. Excuse me, this first half, second quarter. Ty's Ball ball game is tied seven to seven. High formation tied into the left for Humboldt. Two wideouts to the right. Montague rolls out to the right, 
and he's going to throw the ball out. And Logan Morris is right there, Johnny on the spot, jumps in and knocks the ball down. Pretty good, pretty good defensive play right there, Joey. Well, maybe we're kind of learning from our mistakes earlier in this half. Great job, great play there. All we can hope for now is under a minute to go that the Humboldt Vikings run out of time before they can put either three or six points on the board. Unless they have five timeouts. Well, they, they may have five timeouts the way this game is going. 58.8 seconds to go. Third and 11 for the Vikings. Power eye to the right, tight end to the right. So that'll be the way they're running this football. Watson right up the middle. He's going to have a gain of about five on the play. We'll bring up fourth down and six. And they have a pretty good place kicker. Blanking ships coming on, carrying the tee. And so Humboldt's going to try to take this lead by three points here with a field goal. He's going to be rushed. Ball snapped over the head. Blankenship's going to be pulled down right there. And so in the pressure of the moment of making a good snap and a good hold, Humboldt kind of chokes right there and makes a mistake. And Peabody's going to be able to get out of this thing, possibly tied if they can't put points on the board with 23 seconds to go before half. It's kind of the way this game started, it's kind of hard to believe that it's just 7-7. But it's a hard-fought game. These teams are pretty even. First and 10 for Peabody. Barnett's going to be followed by Bogus, and Bogus is going to have the ball run out of bounds. Calling for a flag, but I don't think it. Oh! Didn't appear to be a, a personal foul there going out of bounds. Well, I guess what I'm laughing about is one of the little toy footballs that the cheerleaders throw out was thrown from the stands onto the field. Certainly don't need that. Don't need that out of any of the Peabody fans. That'll get a penalty against the home team. Second and one. Ball's handed off to Barnett. Barnett's going on the loose. He's out here on wide, out of bounds, nearly at the 50-yard Clock line. is running. Clock finally stops about three seconds after he's out of bounds. 8.6 seconds, Peabody has the ball up at midfield. Really don't understand the clock operator letting that clock run. Eight point six seconds to go here before the half. Peabody will have an opportunity to run maybe one, maybe two plays, depending on what type of play they try to run. Clock operator was about eight yards from where Peabody ran out of bounds. Five seconds left on the play clock. Barnett on the run. He's got some room out here on the left side. He's gonna be out of bounds. Is he gonna go out of bounds? And if no way, no way, no way, the official let the clock run out, but there was about one and a half, two seconds left to go on the clock. They're going to have to get them back off the field because there was at least two seconds left. There were about two seconds left on this clock. It, Field like, goal, Coach Coach Gaddis is calling for a field goal. They're going to let him go. They're going to the let him go. They're going to let him go to the half. Let's see. The official says that's the end of the first half. That may be the worst call I've seen all year. That is a terrible this call. This is the playoff. That is a terrible call. And, of course, a lot of the fans and commentators, I guess we have the advantage of, of seeing the clock that the, maybe the officials didn't. But that's certainly a terrible call. And that's going to be the end of the first half as this game is tied 7-7. Seven to seven. The fans are letting them hear about it. We'll come back for the second half. And uh, our own Joey Johnson will be down to get a halftime interview from Coach Gaddis. You're watching Golden Tide football here from Walter Kilzer Stadium on the campus of Peabody High School. First round of the playoffs. We'll be back after this short break.
Whitby Family Clinic offers the very best in primary care, specializing in pediatrics, women's health and weight loss, workman's comp, Medicare, and geriatrics. Come experience the affectionate and caring medical service at its best in a warm, home-like, cozy environment with highly trained nurse practitioners, nurses, and support staff. It has been our pleasure to serve patients in the Trenton area for the past 20 years. At Whitby Family Clinic, we know it is important that you have a medical provider you can talk to and trust. We are devoted to quality care for patients of all ages. Whitby Family Clinic, caring for a living. We proudly present to you the Peabody High School Band of Gold under the direction of Mr. Stephen Westbrook. Their performance tonight is provided by the competitive band. The show is entitled Elemental. They will perform four movements entitled Dark Skies, Cyclonic Destruction, Falling Snow, Rain, Ice Storm, and Parting Clouds. I realize that's more than four. Band captains, Drew Butler and Justin McClinton, Lieutenant Tristan Baker and Alex Hurst. Drum captain, William Carrasco. Guard captain, Ken The band is under the full direction of Mr. Hannah Bridges and J.C.
right now, one in three drivers is cruising around in a state of skepticism about just how much value their car insurance company is delivering. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton can help you get to a better state because she'll talk with you, listen to you, and help put together a policy that has you written all over it from cost to coverage, all backed by 24-7 customer support. Feeling less skeptical? Then call State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton and officially get to a better state with State Farm. And we're back for the second half here on the ball game blitz high school television football show Humboldt will be kicking off to the Golden Tide Peabody will have the ball first as they deferred the first half and went on defense they'll take the uh, ball here the second half Blankenship set to kick off for the Vikings and here's the kick kind of a squib kick right to Aaron Lowry he gets down wisely and Peabody will have good field position to start this second half as they'll have it first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. We saw that kick in the first half, and it seems that Peabody players have been coached what to do when they get the ball, not being caught off guard at all by that. Great field position here as we start this second half. Spread formation, tied in to the left side, two wide outs to the left. Dokes is at the wide out on the right side. Ball handed off to Tavarian Barnett, and he's going to be bottled up for about a two-yard loss, it looks like, on this first play. Seen a lot of Tavarian Barnett and uh, Braxton Bogus. Those have been the two primary figures in this offense in the first half, now starting the second half for Peabody. Had some glimpses of a passing game, not much. I believe Peabody's going to have to throw the ball a little bit to get them off our back on uh, the running game. Well, one-dimensional, only that doesn't work in the long term. Bogus back to pass, and the ball was nearly, nearly intercepted out here by number 42, Cornelius Watson, as they kind of understood and knew that this uh, formation probably was going to be resulting in a, uh, a pass out here in the flat, kind of a bubble screen that you see run a lot on Saturdays and in pro football as well, but uh, Peabody couldn't execute it incomplete. Well, and you can tell. Third and 11. Yeah, you can tell this Humboldt team is well coached. Uh, they're well prepared for this game. Third and 11, Bogus back to pass. And complete down here to Najewan Miller. Beautiful throw and catch. And Miller's got the ball down to about the 17-yard line where he's pushed out of bounds. And so a beautiful throw and catch, Joey, from a junior quarterback to a, a kid who started the year playing quarterback, Najewan Miller. Well, you had three things going for you. You had a beautiful pass. You had a very uh, good catch. But you also had the right matchup. You had... Uh, Najwan Miller over six feet tall against a defensive back who looks to be maybe five six five seven. Worked out in our advantage. Tied into the left, spread formation. Barnett's going to get the football. He's going to have it down to about the five yard line. Excuse me, down to the ten yard line, and that's going to bring up second down and it's going to be second and about uh, two, maybe three yard line to go. Two three yards to go to the first down. Well, you see what happens there. Even in the red zone for us, you see the, the middle open up. A passing game will do that. Stretches the defense, opens up the running game. Second and two. Barnett on the carry right up in the middle, running up amongst the big trees and the big lumber, and they get him down after a short game. Should bring up third and short. You'd like to see him get the edge here. I think Tavarian could get it. With the speed that he has, I don't think Humboldt has a player who can match him. Just a little bit of blocking on the inside, get him on the outside. I think he'll march to the end zone. Bogus on the keeper. 
And he's going to go in for a touchdown. Do they give it to him? Touchdown for the Golden Tide. The back judge comes in and makes the call before either side judge gets there. And the Golden Tide go back out in front 13-7. to A great, great fake there to Tavarian, using him as a decoy. Defense went for it. Bogus was able to slip his way up the middle, power his way into the end zone. Drew Sanders on for the extra point. Bogus is the holder. Snapping is Daniel Hodges. Kick is down and the kick is wide to the left. Went off the side of his foot. Don't know whether it got on the tee right or what, but Peabody uh, maintains a six point lead, 13 to seven as they miss this extra point here as they start off the uh, third quarter. We'll take a break right here and we'll come back as Peabody gets ready to kick off to the Vikings. You're watching a uh, very good high school football game here from Walter Kilzer Stadium. We'll be back right after this short break. Hello, this is Ed Norman, broker with LA Realty of Trenton. I want to thank all of you for making LA number one in our community. We aim to take good care of our customers to the best of our ability. We know that's how a successful real estate firm operates in a small town. Please remember us when you need help or just advice about your real estate. Thanks again. <laughs> 